Oh. My. God. The Mets have been one of the most confusing franchises in baseball since their inception. 2019 may be their most confusing season yet. Their last offseason was highlighted by a first-time GM who made a ton of moves and promised a winning mentality from the front office. Some of those moves haven't really worked out. Cano is in heavy decline and tore his hamstring just as he was beginning to show some signs of life. And the best closer in baseball last year, Edwin Diaz, has been absolutely dreadful in 2019. This season has had some of the lowest moments this franchise has ever had, and that's saying something. They got swept by the Marlins in Miami, their manager and starting pitcher verbally and physically threatened beat writer Tim Healy after a game in Chicago, their GM threw a chair in a meeting with management, he also apparently made some in-game decisions from home, Ioannis Cespedes broke his ankle on his ranch while recovering from surgery, the list goes on and on. But here we are, in August, with the Mets currently the biggest story in Major League Baseball, and finally in a good way. They've won 15 out of their last 17 games, have the best record in baseball since the All-Star break, and have went from the second worst team in the National League at 42 and 51 on July 15th to 61 and 57 here on August 12th. Their manager even went on a WFAN radio show a few weeks back and said they were going to need a miracle to turn this season around, and it looks like they got one. They're now a half game back in the NL wildcard and may actually have a chance to put some pressure on the Atlanta Braves in the NL East, with the Mets heading out to Atlanta this Tuesday. Their starting pitching has carried this winning streak and has thrived in the past few weeks thanks to new pitching coach and the greatest 82-year-old man in baseball, Phil Reagan. With the best 1-5 through five in the game, the Mets' ability to hand the ball to a stud every night has made it easy to consistently win games. Their rotation was good on paper before the deadline, with college professor turned come-at-me-bro football jock Jason Vargas going every fifth day, but the Mets ended up trading the sleeper agent to the Phillies. In another deadline move that shocked everyone, they went and got maybe the most electric personality in baseball in Marcus Stroman, and also decided not to trade Noah Syndergaard and Zach Wheeler away. GM Brody Van Wagenen had decided to go for it, and that's proved to be the right decision so far. On the offensive side, Pete Alonso is raking as usual, Michael Conforto has hit 9 home runs since the break, Ahmed Rosario is hitting well over 300 since the beginning of July, and J.D. Davis has been a shocking top 5 hitter in baseball over the past few months. Bench guys like Luis Guillorme are coming up big in clutch situations, and it's things like that that make all the difference down the stretch. We've discussed in the past the dark magic surrounding this Mets franchise, and it's about as dark as it comes. But when the good Mets magic comes around every once in a while, you can't find a hotter team in the game. This most recent hot streak peaked in this weekend's big series against the Washington Nationals. After a four-game sweep of the Marlins and the acquisitions of huge Mets fan Brad Brock and former giant Joe Panic, the Nationals came to City Field Friday night to start a huge three-game series. I made the late decision to go to Game 1 the other night, and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made, even if I did end up losing my voice from screaming so much. The crowd atmosphere was absolutely incredible, and it felt like October baseball. The Mets came back down from 3-0 to tie it at 3-3, were down 6-3 and scored 4 in the ninth to win the game, with Todd Frazier's game-tying 3-run homer being the big blow. Here's the pitch. Swing and a drive! Deep to left! Down the line! Gone if it's fair! It is a home run! Home run! This game is tied! Look at this stud Dom Smith going out to celebrate the walk-off on his mall cop scooter. I love this kid. Steven Strasburg even called out Nats fans after the game, implying they need to be as loud and as passionate at the games as Mets fans are. That's pretty telling. Game 2 of the series showed the Mets coming back again against the steaming pile of dung called the Nationals' bullpen with some more late-inning heroics. I'm gonna kill myself! Wow. Juan Soto's two homers gave the Nationals a 3-2 lead in the late innings, but pinch hitter Luis Guillorme hit his first big league homer in his 100th at bat to tie it against Fernando Rodney in the 8th, and the Mets went on to win the game 4-3. Jacob deGrom lit up three unearned runs in the first inning of Game 3, the Nationals' Twitter account decided to tweet again, and the Mets just weren't having that. They answered right back and scored three in the second inning. They did end up losing the game because of, you know, the bullpen and Edwin Diaz, but they still won the series. The series was incredibly reminiscent of 2015, when the Nationals came to City Field in August with the Mets behind them by three games in the East, and the Metsies swept them at home and route to a magical World Series run. We just don't like to talk about what happened once we got there. Now, given my history with this team, I get that this run could be over a week from now. They've gone on some crazy runs in the past and have completely collapsed. I'm here to tell you that if I were a betting man, I'd bet on this team. When you've been a Met fan all your life, you can tell when the good Mets magic is in play. After everything that's happened this season, I still can't believe I'm saying this. But I'm all in on this team. They've got a tough schedule ahead, but they put themselves in a position to succeed. At the very least, we need a team with good enough pitching to prevent the Dodgers from making it to another World Series, so if your team is out of it, come root for the boys and queens. No matter how the rest of the year goes, I'm just extremely thankful that I get to watch meaningful Mets baseball in August. There's a chance I can look like an Angel Hernandez tomorrow, but I'm going to say it again. I believe in this team, and I think they're going to go far the rest of the way. As they always say, 
you got to believe. You have to approach them like they're all playoff games. Anything but that. That's going to conclude today's video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Check out some other videos we've made on the top of your screen. And check out the description for some other cool stuff. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.